Yo, what is up everybody? It's Steve with Bama Saltwater. That shrimp boat was really cool. That's some hard work right there to get some fresh Gulf shrimp. We are actually in Florida right now. The good thing about living in Orange Beach and Gulf Shores is that we are right next to the Florida line. So I have my Florida fishing license. So we're gonna come over here and see what we can do. Let's get out to our fishing spot. I'm glad that you can join me. Sit back, relax, and let's get to fishing, y'all. This is a setup I'm using. This is a 3000 size Daiwa BGMQ with 15 pound Yozuri Super Braid on a Crowder seven and a half foot medium heavy fast action inshore fishing rod. Then I'll have some 30 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon leader tied up in a drop shot setup. Down on the bottom is a one ounce bank sinker. You can get those at Bird of Prey along with a whole bunch of other lead. On this little dropper loop is a two watt owner live bait hook and then come up about another foot to a barrel swivel it's as easy as that i love fishing that type of setup around structure because you can feel everything that's happening to your bait and it doesn't get hung up as easy so what i've done is take this nomad squid trek this is actually the smallest one they have it's the one sixth ounce and instead of my hook i put that dropper loop around the nose of it and then it's still on the drop shot just to give it some weight in this deep water with current and we're going to try that. This is going to be interesting to see if we can catch something. I love using these in the bigger versions, but I've been meaning to try the small version. Let's give it a shot. On the drop shot, it's an artificial lure. It just doesn't have a lot of weight, but I love the size of it. So we're going to try that down there and just kind of jig it in spot. Short. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Something try to come up and munch it. I just want to catch one thing doing it this way. That's it. It's one on fit. Oh, I think we got. Oh, yeah, we have one hooked on the squid tracks. See if he'll stay hooked, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. All right. It's a red snapper, but hey, it was on artificial, so that makes it pretty fun. On that little bitty squid right there. We're going to let you go. Get these hooks out of you. There you go, man. Sweet. That worked. The problem I'm having, though, is the uh, hooks are getting caught around the bottom of the leaders. But as long as I keep it tight, should be good. I'm going to drop that down again just because it's fun and I don't have to change out a shrimp every five seconds. Sending the Nomad Squid Tracks back down. It's kind of working it just like a drop shot, like you would if you had a Robo Worm on there. Oh, come on, you. Do I have you? Oh, I do. Sweet. Hit it on that fall. Oh, that's pretty. Different species, finally. Oh, heck yeah. Look at that, mangrove snapper on the squid. Heck yeah, different species. That's a pretty one there, but he's gonna go back and get bigger, hopefully. And we'll come back next year and catch him. Uh, that's a gorgeous fish. That's awesome, finally something a little different. There you go. Hey, so I'm gonna try that again. Still over some fish. Drop that sucker down. All it needed was a little bit of weight to get down because his current's so strong, but that size profile is awesome. There we go. Oh man. We have something pulling on it again. <laughs> this is awesome. I like doing this better than dropping shrimp down. Oh, what are you? Oh, wow, that's a good mangrove. We're keeping him. Yo, we just caught dinner. <laughs> on the little bitty squid tracks dude check out that mangrove who would have thought on that little artificial i've said it 50 times already the name of it but he got the hooks good that is so cool i'm fishing it on a drop shot like i would for bass and uh, decided to put this on and this has outfished and actually brought home us some dinner so we're going to do a catch and cook on him because these are delicious tasty fish what a beautiful mangrove snapper on the squid let's keep on going after it <laughs> this is awesome so we have dinner and that fish is spiked and then bled out and put in a nice ice slush and it's going to be so fresh that we get to take it home i'm going to keep on dropping the squid on the drop shot down and see what else we get and i'm using 30 pound fluorocarbon leader mainly for abrasion and also it's a little stiffer so that loop stands out and doesn't get tangled as bad oh my goodness that seagull just Got him some food.
Oh, finally. All right, they're interested in it again. Are you gonna stay pinned this time? I hope so. Bring it up carefully. Don't try not to yank them hooks out of his mouth because they're very light wire. But this is just letting it sit there now. Oh, it's a little red, a little red snapper. <laughs> What's up, little buddy? You like that jig, huh? All right, there you go, man. Oh, there we go. Jigged it a few times and then just let it sit. Come here, you. What are you, red? Where's your mangrove snapper buddies? That's what I'm after. <laughs> You're still fun though. Still fun. And you go. Can't say I've caught a decent amount of fish without having to get a live shrimp out every two seconds. Someone change it up a little bit and throw this Bird of Prey circle hook jig. You can pick these up on Bird of Prey's website. They'll be linked down below. Use promo code BAMA10 and save you some money. But I have this just tied straight to fluorocarbon leader. This is Yozuri 20 pound fluoro. Let's get it down there with the live shrimp. Y'all have some pretty live shrimp in there. Let's see, let's go. They're all nice and healthy. I'm gonna tail hook it just one time through the back of the tail. There we go. Not a bad little setup. Oh, oh, on the circle hook jig. Oh, that one feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. What are you? Another red? Sweet. That's why I like these jigs because they're simple and to the point. Get you out of there. There you go. Got another shrimp on there. I may drop down a few more times and call it a day. Caught a lot of fish. What kind of fish is going to bite this time? And we got it. Oh, and we don't have it. Dang it. <laughs> oh, oh crap. Couldn't close the bail. Came back for it. <laughs> well, that worked out. If this is something we can't keep them it's gonna be the last cast uh, just another red snapper <laughs> oh come here you oh it's windy up here that's not a bad one we're gonna call it a day though and head back in and cook up our fish and circle hooks just twist it around or use a d hooker and he's gone well we're gonna head back to the house y'all got a decent amount got a decent amount of driving in a boat i gotta do so <laughs> i'll probably see you at the cleaning table hey we're back at the cleaning table and we're gonna prep up this mangrove snapper for our lunch it's a 14 inch mangrove and we're gonna leave it whole so all we got to do is scale it gut it take the gills and eyes out and we'll be good to go and this is on the custom cnc machined bird of prey tailgate clean table so first thing i want to do is remove the scales Serrated knife works good. You can use the back of your regular fillet knife. A spoon works good as well, but I actually have a scaler. It's like six bucks at Bass Pro Shops a few years ago. And it works extremely well. You can make your own out of bottle caps, put them on a wooden dowel. There's multiple ways to scale fish, as I like to say. <laughs> you do want to get them all off as much as you can on both sides. Once you've scaled it, rinse it off. So now that our fish is scaled, we just need to field dress it. And so make a shallow cut in its stomach. And I like to cut up to the gills. And we'll remove all those innards, the gills, and the eyeball. Now, I've shown this in previous videos, but a fish's eyeball, the lens, will always amaze me how perfectly spherical it is and clear. Look at that. That is inside their eye. That's pretty amazing. It's hard like a marble, too. Really cool. So, hang up the knife. And see how easy that was? It didn't take long to do. And I love doing this, especially on this size of a snapper. And the only other thing we'll do is pat it dry and then score it before we season and cook it. But see, this is field dressed. It just needs patted dried. I'm gonna take this inside and get ready to cook it. Yeah, we're in the kitchen. This is our mangrove snapper. 
Beautiful fish right there. Let me just show you the ingredients real quick because we're gonna bake this fish and it's gonna taste so good and be full of flavor. I'm gonna have to make a chili, garlic, and ginger paste. So I have some chopped garlic, chopped ginger, and some serrano chilies in there. And we're gonna take this mortar and pestle and make that paste. And then I have some serrano chilies sliced for some additional flavor, a little bit of salt, cumin powder, coriander powder, and a chopped onion because we're going to grill these or saute them and it's going to be nice on the side but this is our main ingredient right here i'm letting the oven preheat to 375 degrees while i do that we're going to make our ginger garlic chili paste you can do this with a food processor as well i don't have a food processor because <laughs> it broke so we're doing it the old-fashioned way so if you have a mocajete you can do it in that as well get all this in there see freshly chopped garlic freshly chopped ginger and chilies don't worry we'll get that one we got that in there let's add some coarse salt just a little sprinkle there we go helps bind it together get some texture brings out those flavors get this all mushed up into a nice paste see that so do this for a few minutes till it's in a paste and our oven should be preheated by then. About the consistency you want, but it brings out all those flavors. Look at those juices. That's what's going to give the fish some flavor. Now we got to come over to our fish and get this ready and prepped. So scoring it allows the meat to cook a little more even and also those flavors to get in the fish. See that? Real easy. I do a cross hatch. This is my salt, cumin, and coriander. Gonna mix that together and coat this fish with that get some of that good flavor because most of it's going to be on the skin and on this side this is our baking pan we need to take some extra virgin olive oil lay that down coat this pan and this is what's going to give it nice and crispy texture while it's baking got the olive oil now it's time to add our paste the real flavor so we're going to get that on the fish don't be afraid to get messy rub it in get all those flavors of that chili that garlic and that ginger they work together great some in that belly as well so now we have our fish seasoned there's going to be one more thing i want to do and that's take a scored shallow sliced serrano chili put in that belly it's time to put our fish in the oven it's at 375 degrees we're going to let this fish cook about 15 to 20 minutes so now the fish is cooking, let's heat us up a pan so we can saute our onions. So we have our white onion, sliced serrano chili, a couple of fresh curry leaves, and then the only thing I'm gonna season it with is this Goya adobo all-purpose seasoning. Get some EVOO. Got our chilies in there. A couple curry leaves and those are gonna pop. <laughs> That's always funny when you throw it in there. Let those brown a little bit, then we'll add the onions. And what that does is just bring out some nice flavor. And here's our onions. Ooh. Lastly, I'm going to add this Goya Adobo All Purpose Seasoning. There we go. It's a lot of onions, so. Ooh, that already smells amazing. You want to make sure you do this in a well-ventilated kitchen because it can be a little spicy in the air. <laughs> well, we're just going to let these saute on the stovetop until they turn nice and brown. Ooh, these onions smell good. Look at that. They're getting nice and sauteed, caramelized, whatever you want to call it. And onions are actually pretty healthy for you, too. They're a good antioxidant. It helps your immune system fight off the viruses stuff like that you can look up there's a reason for a lot of these ingredients to be on the earth i think each one of them has a special purpose let's just take a peek at it real quick oh yeah looks good we have these really cool wooden uh, they protect your countertop from uh high heat like your pans and your dishes but one of y'all made these for us and that is amazing really cool artwork and just kind of let them cool down right there and they'll still sizzle a little bit in that hot pan and our fish is almost ready fish is ready let's pull it out <laughs> oh wow look at that the 
That's awesome. I'll set it on those pot holders and let that cool down. I'm gonna warm up some tortillas and we have some crumbled queso. I really like corn, but flour works just as well. It's what we have in the fridge. Look at that tortilla, just warming them up, making them nice. So we have our mangrove snapper cooked, our sauteed onions. I have some queso that you can crumble, regular sour cream and some tortillas, and we're gonna eat this. The best way to eat food as a human is with your hands. So let's give it a taste. Rip off tortilla. I'm just gonna get a little bit of that fish first. Ooh wee. Look at that mangrove snapper. Snapper is delicious. Get some of that onion. Sprinkle, crumble some cheese on there, dip it in sour cream, and here's a good bite. Mmm. That is a lot to eat at one time. That was delicious. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad that we were able to actually catch something. It started out real slow, but if you want to try this yourself, it's well worth it. It's fun just to combine a bunch of ingredients that work amazing together and it's all homemade and fresh. This is our lunch, so I gotta let you go so we can actually finish our food. Hope you enjoyed this video. All of our partners of the channel are linked down below, along with some promo codes you can use to save some money if you wanna pick up some. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, if you wanna keep up with more Catch Clean Cooks. I love fishing out here. It's a, such an awesome and amazing fishery we have. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Most importantly, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.